So a couple of weeks ago, I kind of mentioned that it'd be cool to <laughs> make an apple cider press because we were going to go pick some apples at an orchard and uh, Taylor kind of ran with it. <laughs> yeah, it. Sounded like a good project and apple cider is delicious. We're going to have a lot of it. We're going to go get more apples hopefully tomorrow, but we're going to test this out today. So. Since Taylor was building this from complete scratch, we figured it would be fun to film the process for you. So you're going to see that next. And I think we might actually have plans available for this in the near future on our website. So keep an eye out for that. We started with mill cut hard maple that was surfaced on three sides, but I still needed to cut everything to length and width for our press design. The design we came up with uses one by four board size at varying lengths for the different pieces but most of our boards were closer to three quarter inches thick after being surfaced by the lumber mill. Overall, we ended up using about 13 board feet of material. I began the process by squaring one end of each board so I could accurately measure the length. After they were squared, I cut them to length for each piece I needed to build the press. We got this saw second hand back in January and I haven't had a chance to try it out yet. So when I attempted to rip the boards to the four inch width, I realized that the table saw fence had a design flaw. It's pretty common for these more affordable saws to have a subpar fence. I ended up having to use the grinder to clean up the cast section so I could feed the board in flat to the table. That way it would clear the fence. Once I had all the boards of the same length cut to size, I clamped them all together and cut the ends off flush so I knew they'd be exactly the same length. In order to measure the final thickness of all my parts stacked together, I did a mock-up on the workbench so I could determine the length of hardware I needed to buy. I needed to measure the exact position of the bolt holes that would go through the entire assembly to hold it together securely. To place all the bolt holes in exactly the same spot, I clamped all the vertical leg pieces together and drilled through all of them at once. After drilling all the holes, I made a few attempts to assemble the press. I realized the holes I drilled didn't leave any wiggle room, so I had to assemble and disassemble it multiple times and widen the holes until everything fit together. Once I had it assembled with the bolts, I started to determine where to put the screws for extra reinforcement. After screwing the top boards, I needed to figure out how much material to remove in order to install the press screw that's actually going to push down on the apples and release the liquid from them. I marked where those cuts needed to be and disassembled it so I could actually cut the sections. I cut the middle board in half and completely removed a section for the screw but the side pieces just needed reliefs cut into them instead of cutting all the way through. For this, I used the hand miter saw to cut it to a specific depth, and then I just chiseled out the remaining material. While I had it taken apart, I moved on to the main step of any woodworking project, sanding. I didn't spend too much time on this because this is more of a tool than a finished piece of furniture. I finished sanding and then assembled the press again for what I hoped would be the last time. Now that it was put back together, it was time to actually attach the press screw. And then I installed even more reinforcement screws to keep everything square under pressure. The last big piece of the press that needed to get attached was the feet and their diagonal bracing to make sure the press can stand on its own. I ended up having to install all of the screws for the feet by hand because I lost the drill bit for this. We didn't get footage of it, but we also got a mahogany dowel to use as our handle for twisting down the press screw. But it turned out to be a bit too big in diameter to fit, so I had to sand it down quite a bit, which took some time because the only tool I have for this is a handheld orbital sander. I eventually got it to fit though. After I was done working on the handle, I went back to the press and applied two coats of clear semi-gloss polyurethane. This finish would be sufficient enough to prevent anything from soaking into the wood, and it'll still allow us to clean the press up after we use it each year. Sometime before next year's apple season, I'll sand back this fairly rough finish and apply more coats to make sure it's completely sealed. Now that the press was finished, we needed to come up with a way to chop up our apples into small pieces. We decided to use a threaded rod with a flat piece of metal attached to the end. The idea was to use our drill to spin this inside of a bucket full of apples and hopefully chop most of them up. You'll see later in the video that this piece of our process needs some refinement. We also needed a container to hold our apples while we press them. This is another part of the process we're working on refining. It looks so nice. So this is what we've got. Are you ready to test it out? Yeah. Yeah, I'll try and uh, cut up some apples and then start pressing them. So we have about a bushel of apples. These are second apples that we got two, two weeks ago. Yeah. Sorry, sophisticated crushing system. Oh, 
So I didn't have enough lock nuts to put a lock nut on both sides of this. So I just double nutted these two. Um, but that came loose, it seems like. So I'm gonna see if putting this lock washer on here will keep it tight, which is kind of what I had laying around. If this doesn't work, we might need to go get another locking nut. Dang. You got most of them. Yeah. So we're just going to use the foil pan temporarily, but eventually we want to get like a stainless steel. I don't know what they're called. Restaurant pan. A lot in this one. Dripping. It's working. I didn't expect it to go this well. It's actually like bending the bucket over oh gosh. The, uh, the edge here. Yeah. Oh yeah, this side's quite, it's got some dimples. All right, now oh, you can try it first. It's really good. It's not like too sweet. It's like a sweet cider, but it's not too sweet. All right, let me get a taste of this. It tastes very fresh. Crisp tanginess. Mm. Yeah, I could drink that whole, whole bucket right now. <laughs> That's really good. Well, that was nice while it lasted. Where, where do we go from here? Um... It's a lot of apples. It's a half bushel of apples. The goodness. I mean, the juice. that was a pretty good trial run for our cider press. We are gonna go get more bushels of apples. We're hoping that they have like a lot of boxes of seconds, um, the bushel baskets of seconds, because we wanna get a lot of them. We're planning to make hard cider out of some of this and then can slash freeze some of it. We've never done the hard cider before and it's something we've wanted to try. So we figure we might as well get a bunch because they're really cheap and we have the press. Taylor is gonna be refining the bucket system tonight and tomorrow morning before we get those. I would say successful first run. The bucket is definitely the weak point, which we're gonna, we're gonna work on that. In later years, we're gonna like refine this better, but for this year, it's working really well. Um, ignore my blue lips. <laughs> we just went and got ice cream. It's our local ice cream shop's like last day being open for the year. So we went and got ice cream and I got blue ice cream. So my lips are blue. I'm just about to pour the apple cider that we pressed today with like our almost bushel into a bowl. And then I'm gonna ladle into jars to measure it. We're gonna measure it per quart because I think I'm gonna can it or at least some of it. We might freeze some of it. And then I'll save some of it in the fridge so I can make apple cider donuts as well. Oh, it's 
smells so good. I wish you could smell this. <laughs> That's like full, full. My guess is it's gonna be seven quarts. The next day we went to Lowe's to get the lock nuts that Taylor needed to make the apple crusher thing that we made actually work. And then we headed over towards Asheville to get a lot more apples. We got six more bushels of apples. I really like this orchard that we've been going to and I think we'll definitely keep going here in future years before we get our own apples from our property. I just filled this bucket of scraps up with water. It's not covering them, but it'll be okay. The apples float when you put water on them, so you can't really cover them. But I added water. I think this, this five gallon bucket was like three quarters of the way full of apples, two thirds to three quarters of the way full. I added 10 quarts of water and I added 10 tablespoons of sugar to it. So this is gonna be apple scrap vinegar. We are gonna try and do this with all of our scraps that we get from pressing cider. And the reason for that is we use a lot of apple cider vinegar in our bird's water. So we figure this is like a byproduct of the cider we wanna make and apple cider vinegar is kind of expensive to buy. So we're gonna try and make a bunch of it so it should last us for like the whole year for giving them giving it to them in their water. And then if I need it for cooking or things like that, I can use it. Um, so we're gonna need to get some more buckets so we can keep these downstairs. But the idea is that we'll just let this sit for a week or two, strain it out, give the apple scraps to the birds at that point because they'll be fermented. And that will mean zero waste from them. They'll get to eat them and they should love them because they love the apple cider vinegar. And then we will let the vinegar sit for another little bit after that. And then it should be done. You're supposed to cover these with the lid lightly and not like close it all the way or with like a, a coffee filter or something but obviously a coffee filter is not going to fit on this so I'm just taking a bunch of these old towels that I have they're just like little hand towels this one's a little raccoon <laughs> and i'm gonna cover them and then i'm just gonna loosely set the lid on i'm not gonna like push it down all the way i'll just push it down in like two spots so there's a little gap there okay we're trying this again today yep. the buckets yesterday broke they snapped under the pressure so we got a stock pot because we couldn't find any <laughs> yeah metal buckets aren't that common um it was gonna be like a two-week wait for shipping on those so we got a stock pot at Walmart and this is like a four gallon, four gallon, 16 quart? Yeah, I think it was 16 quart. Stock pot and Taylor just drilled a bunch of holes in it like he did for the bucket. And we're gonna try it and hope that it works. Now I would expect that we can't break this. You would think that the wood would break first, so. We'll see. Um, and then something we didn't show you guys yesterday was this, this is like Taylor's little thing you rigged up to push down on it yeah i kind of forgot about this um to film it anyway we just had to i just cut a couple discs out of a sheet of plywood that was doubling as my workbench and this is what actually sits on top of the apples and gets pressed down so we've got a bunch of these blocks that we were just kind of yeah these are just like chunks of two by four i cut out and then these just kind of make up the height difference you need as you press through the motion since this can't go like absolutely to the bottom we wanted to leave extra room to get stuff in and out of there so we had to make it a little taller we also made another little improvement he was just downstairs working on this we chopped into the bucket a lot yesterday <laughs> we rounded the corners off on this so hopefully it won't cut through the bucket quite as bad and then i put nylon locking nuts on here yeah. with lock washers so hopefully that'll hold on and not loosen up like it was yesterday it should be okay it seems pretty smooth It got down to like 37 or 38 last night, so it's kind of chilly today. It's also quite windy, so if you guys can't hear us, that's why. Oh, it's like sloppy 
better than yesterday. It looked yeah, like it worked. It seemed like it worked better. Some of it got really ground because I like added more apples after grinding some of it, you know. Cinch up the the baggie. She's flowing. I feel like these ones are juicier than yesterday's. Like, just by the looks of them being chopped. Put it in the storage. I'm so happy with this. Me too. This is really cool, isn't it? Yeah. Your cider, your apple puck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put this bag over this for now just to. Yeah. Make sure no buggies get in there. Yeah, this is definitely improved from yesterday. Yeah, I think so. You know what's not improved? The fact that you're wearing flip flops. What? It's less sharp though, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think tying the bag up kind of compresses it a little bit. Yeah, it keeps the holes a little open, more open. Some of the holes unplugged anyway. So we're not going to get through all six bushels tonight. We made it through one, but it's almost dark. So we'll do more of them tomorrow. Hopefully the rest of them tomorrow. Yeah. We'll see. It's probably going to be dark before we can finish them. But... So far, the pot, the stock pot, definitely the way to go. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we haven't bent this at all. It could use a few more holes, but we can add those later. Yeah, yeah, so we'll probably add more holes to it, but I think we've gotten more than we got out of the last bushel. So we're gonna measure it. I also wanted to mention we'll be premiering our one year homestead anniversary video next Sunday. So keep an eye out for that and don't forget to watch.